Okay, here we are. Here's my seat. The next 45 hours, two nights here in this seat. Hi, where are you going? Hello, I'm going to Chicago and coach. For how many? One. Am I allowed to like choose a seat? Not usually, but we are white, okay? Oh, I was just really hoping for a side, on, like a seat on the window on the south side, the right side. The right side window. Yeah. Okay, we can do that. Thanks. Get things are moving. My ticket, which I bought on Amtrak's website three weeks ago, was $146. Hello, think this is me? Okay, yeah, wonderful. Okay. Number eight. How do I go? Upstairs? Upstairs, yeah. Thank you. Amtrak's Southwest Chief extends over 2,000 miles through eight states between Los Angeles and Chicago. My eastbound train is scheduled to leave LA at 5.55 p.m. Pacific time and, if on time, arrive in Chicago at 2.50 p.m. Central Time two days later. I'll have a coach seat the entire way. Okay, here we are. Here's my seat. The next 45 hours, two nights, here in this seat. We left LA Union Station right on time. Okay, we just started right on time to the minute. Let's see if it stays that way. So far so good, not many people at all on this train. I do hear some people behind me playing music, and somebody up here has a very small baby who's been kind of crying and yelling the whole time, so. Okay, I got some cool facts about this train, Southwest Chief. The top speed of this train is 90 miles an hour. Um, the average is about 52 miles an hour. It goes 2,256 miles. It's scheduled to take 43 or 44 hours, I think, um, if it's on time. It's a daily route, it goes daily in each direction, and there are 32 stations total on the whole route, including the endpoints. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jimmy from the cafe. Sorry about the disruption in the air there. I want to welcome you folks all aboard the Southwest team and uh, let you folks know that the cafe is open and serving. So you're aware, Cafe is located on the lower level of the sightseeing lounge car. Here he has a selection of snacks, hot cold beverages, and breakfast, lunch, and dinner items. And just so you're aware, Cafe is open this evening until 10.30. At 10.30, the cafe closes down for the night. But otherwise, everybody on board, sit back, relax, enjoy your journey. The good thing about the departure time is that right away you're treated to a great California sunset. All this before arriving at the first stop, 32 minutes into the journey, which is Fullerton, California. Before the next station though, we were already experiencing one of the inevitable and infamous aspects of an Amtrak ride, a delay for another train. Ladies and gentlemen, we are stopping. There's train traffic ahead of us. Once they clear, we'll continue into Riverside. Thank you. On this train, there's a dining car, but uh, I have a coach seat, so I'm not allowed to go in. It's only for sleeper car customers. There is a cafe which sells more simple kind of cheaper food. So I'm gonna go find that because I'm hungry and it's dinner time. See what they have at the cafe. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. This is Jimmy from the cafe. Folks, well, just to uh, answer a couple questions so everybody is aware. Just want to let you folks know who are traveling in coach restrooms. You will find restrooms on the lower level of the coach accommodations where you enter the train. There are five restrooms in each coach car. And folks, smoke stops will be announced um, about five or ten minutes prior to when there will be a smoke break, so please listen up for those. And just another couple side notes when walking about the train, folks, we ask that you please wear your shoes. This is for your safety. And also, folks, if you're traveling with kids at age 
ages 12 or under, please make sure that they are accompanied at all times. Otherwise, just sit back, relax, and thank you very much. Hello. Hello. What you looking for? The uh, lounge. Oh, the cafe. Well, welcome. Just kind of looking around, too. All right. It's good to know your territory. <laughs> That's right. A lot of the stops go by merely as curiosities, something to look at from the window. Sometimes though you get to step off the train and look around. Okay, we are in Barstow, California. It's about 9.50 p.m. and this is a smoke stop in which they allow people to get off the train and mill around for about 10 minutes. In this case, 10 minutes. And people are getting on the train too. We were about 15 minutes late on some of the earlier stations, but I think we've got caught up. So they turned off the lights for the night at like 8.30. So they, there's like very low lighting in the car now. It's pretty chilled atmosphere. A lot of people are already sleeping. Everybody's got two seats to themselves. So most people are like spread across the two seats, curled up in the two seats. Um, there are at least two babies screaming on my car. It might be two, it might be three, I'm not sure. It's either three babies or it's two babies, one of them screaming, one of them alternating between screaming and like babbling happily in like one minute increments. It's already an exciting kind of adventure here in Coach and it's only the first night. I've only been here a few hours. There's two more nights of this. What am I gonna do all day tomorrow? Anyway, so I'm gonna go enjoy this stop here at Barstow. This Casa del Desierto was a Harvey house. Harvey houses were like restaurants and hotels placed around a lot of train stations in the West, 20s and 30s and 40s and stuff. And this one, the one here at Barstow, is one of the nicest ones. And it closed in 1971. The building still remains here. This is the station now. That's one of the finest examples of the wonderful Spanish uh, revival style. I kept an eye on Amtrak's online train tracker. It said we were going to be a few minutes late to the next stop, Needles, California, but with confidence that we'd be on time getting into Chicago. And so I settled into the steady rhythm of the rails, through the mysterious darkness, for my first night of sleeping, or trying to sleep, in my coach seat. At first light, I was already awake. We were in or near the petrified forest in eastern Arizona. Southwest Chief is unique in that it passes through a national park, even if most passengers are asleep. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are approximately 10 minutes from Gallup, Mexico. If Gallup is your intended destination, that would be a good time to return to your coach and force the new car combination. Yeah, they're flying. Throw your trash in the new trash bin and go to the train. Gallup will be a brief pressure. So let me take a step up the train to the next time it's a great you may do so. The lounge and dining car do not open. Good morning, we are here in Gallup, New Mexico. All night long we rode through California and then Arizona. Sometime in the middle of the night I uh, woke up and we were stopped at Kingman, Arizona. So I knew we were in Arizona. Um, no, I did not sleep well at all. I tried to curl up in the seat, the two seats. Uh, sometimes I would lean one seat back so the seat beside me was not leaned back and I could kind of lay my head on it, but sitting up and, and I tried everything and I slept yeah, maybe three or four hours total, maybe. Um, got cold in the middle of the night, so I put my coat on uh, and it's still cold, it's chilly out here. But so far so good. Gallup, New Mexico, originally was not a town, it was just a, like a railroad office. Like the railroad workers would come to the office here to get their paychecks from a guy named David Gallup. They started saying, like, let's go to Gallup and get our paychecks. And eventually somebody said, well, let's just call the place Gallup, New Mexico. So that's how it got its name. We're in a different time zone, an hour ahead. So I'm thinking it's like 8.30 in the morning. It's actually 7.30 California time and Arizona time. Uh, so it's a little early for breakfast, but I'm gonna have it anyway. My head kind of hurts from the not sleeping and the, uh, the hot dog for dinner last night. <laughs> and I'm a guy who never gets headaches, but I got one now. So I'm gonna go find breakfast. I'm gonna get some like a breakfast sandwich, I think from the cafe uh, and some coffee. 
and just sit and watch the scenery today. The scenery is going to be very, very nice today. Today is all New Mexico and Colorado. I must say, the breakfast sandwich, surprisingly good. I don't know what they did to the bread, but it's real butter sensation to it. It's very good with coffee here. Looking at this scenery here in the morning. This is, by the way, the um, observation car. So the bottom level of this car is the cafe where you buy all this stuff. Look at this scenery. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our next station is about coming up here in about two hours from now. We'll be Albuquerque, New Mexico. Amtrak is a non-smoking train. If you're caught smoking on board, this does include e-cigarettes. You will be removed by law enforcement at our earliest convenience. There are many road crossings between here and your intended destination, and we can use any number of them to remove you from this train. buy a sleeper compartment you get access to a shower or if you get a bedroom you get your own shower in your room if you're in a coach seat like me you do not get access to any shower so that's two nights on this train with no shower so I will show you the bathroom just kind of show you around what uh, what they have here in this little bathroom because there are plenty of these we do have access to these of course the toilet the toilet paper is out there's another one there flush button is here. We've got a sink. Um, if you press one of these, it just shoots out real fast, only while you're pressing it. There's a slight difference in the temperature of the water, but it's they're both kind of room temperature. Some soap, pretty nice soap. Call the attendant button with both tissues and towels. Towels for drying and tissues for tissues. That's kind of nice. Even got an outlet. If you want to dry your hair. Infant changing table. Let's see. I can I can verify that there are infants on this train. Well that is a grimy looking table. It has some toilet seat covers, that's a nice. Just a kind of a deodorizer thing. Oh, more cups. It doesn't say you can't drink this, so I I don't know, I bet you can. I hope you can. I never like this design where you have to touch the surface. And get the trash in. I do that on airplanes too. So there being no shower for me, I'm going to do my best here. I'm going to uh, maybe wash and soap off my face, uh, dry it with a towel, um, brush my teeth, which I didn't do last night because it's just kind of a hassle and feel like getting up and stumbling on the train. And see if I can do my best to feel refreshed.
The next stop was Albuquerque, New Mexico, one of the train's longest scheduled breaks. And we were 14 minutes early, making it even longer. Folks, if you're remaining on board, just know that the cafe will be closed while we're at the Albuquerque station. And it is a tad bit early, but for those of you who aren't going to be leaving, I just want to thank all of you very much for your patronage. It's been a pleasure traveling with you, and I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you. Hey, we're in Albuquerque. We have an hour stop here. It's about uh, 11 o'clock local time, which is mountain time. We got about an hour here because the train crew has to do something to the train. It's scheduled here, so a scheduled one hour break. And this is my first chance to actually go all the way to the front of the train to see the engines and stuff. Okay, this is Albuquerque, what a nice town. Six applesauces, challenge to eat all that before we get to Chicago. Thanks a lot. Okay, I got uh, some excellent lunch and snack foods from Silver Street Market, based on the recommendation of uh, the guy on the train. The guy on the train is leaving here in Albuquerque. He's getting off the train. And I was talking to Jimmy in the cafe about the shifts, how the shifts work in the, on the train. He said the like service staff, like him, the people in the cafe and restaurant stuff, they stay for the whole ride LA to Chicago. But the drivers and conductors and people operating the train, there's like five shift changes. I thought that was insane. I was like, five, why? And then I did the math and I was like, oh yeah, well, eight or nine hour shift, 40, 45 hours, makes sense. I also heard him saying to some other passenger that here in Albuquerque, there's like seven people getting on the train, but in Kansas City, there's going to be, I think he said 107, but anyway, probably after that, it's gonna be completely 100% full. He said every seat full. So when we get to Kansas City, someone will definitely by then be sitting beside me and I'll lose my little two seat kingdom. Another thing is that it might be possible for me to go to the dining car and pay the price for the meal, but I've decided not to do that on this trip. I'm not gonna take any meals in the dining car it's going to be all cafe or this market for me in an effort to save money and because that's my fate. I paid for the coach seat. That's what happens. But according to the, uh, the staff, I asked him yesterday, if it's not that many people like it was last night, then it's no problem. A coach customer can go into the dining car, pay the price on the menu, which is 30 or $40 for a meal, but you can do it. Today's lunch is tuna sandwich, cheddar and sour cream ruffles, an applesauce with no spoon and Dr. Pepper zero sugar. There should be no visitors or baggage handlers. This is the last call for Albuquerque. If you want to get off in Albuquerque, you need to come downstairs right now. Thank you. A quick thank you to everybody who's subscribing to my free email newsletter, behind the scenes info and early links to new videos before they're published. And thanks to everybody on Patreon who is helping support this channel and my travels and my videos. And super special thanks to Omire, Ray Inn, and Will Phillips. The Southwest Chief got quiet and relaxing in the afternoon. The tracks were even smooth. I had to keep my voice down when recording, but the next stop was on my mind because it's an especially notable one. In about half an hour, we're gonna be at Lamy, New Mexico. And about a hundred 
years ago or whenever, back in the day, there was a railway company called Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. And they wanted to build a train line to Santa Fe, New Mexico. There was not one at the time. And everybody called the railway Santa Fe for short. So Santa Fe was kind of their guiding spirit. It was in their name. It was the whole point of the line. So they built out west. Then they got to Santa Fe. They got near Santa Fe, New Mexico. And they realized that the terrain was not good for the type of tracks they were using. And so the best they could do was they could go to Lamy, which is like 25 miles or something south of Santa Fe. And then they built a separate spur line from there. So you'd have to change trains at Lamy, which no one had ever heard of, and go up to Santa Fe. And it's still that way today. So the Southwest Chief doesn't go to Santa Fe. It still stops at Lamy. And you can still have to take a shuttle between Lamy and Santa Fe if you want to go there. It's a bus now. So, a little strange quirk of American railroad history. And I gotta say, the scenery may have caused the uh, railway company some headaches, but as a passenger here today, unbelievable. The American West is always unbelievable, no matter how many times you've seen it. And the Southwest Chief is really a great way to see it. I mean, this has been going on like this for a long time, and it just never gets old. By the way, let me show you how this seat reclines for sleeping at night. So you got your two latches here. Pull this one up for the back and this one for your feet. So if you pull the one for the back, it goes back like that. And then the other one allows you to pull this out for your legs. So you do it as much as you want. I had it pretty much horizontal last night. I had both of them out so I could kind of lay on the whole thing. At one point, the westbound Southwest Chief Number 3 was coming towards us just ahead and it was our turn to divert to a siding and wait for it to pass. How neighborly of us. I believe the main track is going into the siding here at Bucks. We are going to have to meet our sister train, Amtrak train number three today. Unfortunately, this is single track here. We're going into the siding, and unfortunately, today is our day to go into the siding. Just as soon as number three passes our location, we will be able to leave the siding make our way back onto the main track and towards our next station stop of Las Vegas, New Mexico. I do apologize for the delay, ladies and gentlemen. If anything else changes, I will keep you updated, and I do appreciate your patience. Thank you. Faucet downstairs for free drinking water is out in my car. I was hoping they might have refilled it at the shift change, but they didn't. So let's see if I can fill this in the next car. Drinking water is a good idea on a long train ride like this, and with a bottle from the cafe costing more than two dollars or three fifty if you're dumb enough to buy a Pellegrino, I was hoping for something cheaper. Good idea. I know, right? 
I would like to get um, a Pellegrino water if I could. Do you care for some ice? Oh, no, thanks. Okay. That's going to be a free campaign. That makes four. And then we got five. Okay. You have a great afternoon. All right, thank you. And, uh, hope you're enjoying your trip. It's great, yeah. Just sitting here in the observation car watching the endless yellow and green fields and cows go by waiting for what might be a really nice sunset. I wanted to say that the, the way the stops are spaced out here on the Southwest Chief um, is really nice. We'll stop somewhere. It's kind of exciting when there's a stop because it's something happening. And then after that happens... Hello, on the right. Anyway, then we have like an, two hours, an hour and a half, two hours, three hours to ourselves. So it's just enough to sort of break up the rhythm of the train. Every now and then you stop and you can kind of see some buildings and see some people and stuff. And then you go again and then it's all yours again. And no one can get on or off. We're kind of in this big long cocoon together. I like the I like the pace of it. Thank you. Our next fresh air and smoky stop will be Raton, New Mexico. If you'd like to exit the train and stretch your legs, get some fresh air or enjoy a cigarette. Now here in Raton, New Mexico. This is the last stop in New Mexico and just north of here is something really cool. It's the highest point of the whole route. It's a tunnel that goes through the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. And as soon as you go through the tunnel, as soon as you emerge on the other side, that's the state line of Colorado, the tunnel. One of the highlights of the trip. The grades to get up to the tunnel, which is a mile and a half over sea level. The grades are really steep, it's like three and a half percent in some places. So the train struggles up. Freight trains don't do this anymore. They have a different route they go. So I think Amtrak is the only one that uses this section of the track here to get up to the tunnel and over the Raton Pass. the 30s there was a train company called Santa Fe and they had a bunch of lines everywhere and they had a passenger service between LA and Chicago basically on this route. It was called Super Chief and it was sleeper cars only. They also had a train called El Capitan and it was coach seats like this only and they ran on alternate days so they merged into just one service that ran every day and it was just called Super Chief slash El Capitan. Simple enough. So when Amtrak took over in 1971 they decided to continue it. They dropped the El Capitan part of the name in 1973. Unfortunately, in 1974, Santa Fe said, Amtrak, you have to stop using the word chief because chief, we invented the word chief for train services and it means something. It means a certain level of service and niceness and you guys don't have it. Amtrak's not providing it. So stop calling it super chief. So Amtrak said, okay. So they called it the Southwest Limited in 1974. And in 1984, service had improved and it was a nicer train, nicer ride, so Santa Fe said, okay, you can call it Chief again. So rather than revive the old name in 84, they called it the Southwest Chief, and that's what it's still called today. For two years, in the late 90s, it actually connected with another train in Chicago and the Capitol Corridor, and it continued all the way to Washington, D.C. So for those two years, it was possible to go between Los Angeles and Washington, D.C. with one train, without getting off the train. It was only two years and they discontinued it in 1998. I don't know why. 
ladies and gentlemen, this is La Hunter, Colorado. This is your very last opportunity of the night to step off the train, stretch your legs, and have a cigarette break. Your first opportunity will be tomorrow morning at Kansas City. All right, this is the last stop where we can actually get off and take a smoke break or a fresh air break uh, until tomorrow morning, Kansas City. This is La Junta, Colorado. And when I get back on, it's dinner time. A cheeseburger, uh, hummus with pretzels, applesauce, banana, Stella. Good morning. It's uh, about six o'clock local time here in Kansas. We are all the way across Kansas. We spent all night in the darkness through Kansas. Six a.m. here is five a.m. yesterday and four a.m. of California time. The specific hour really has no meaning in a trip like this. But the good news is, the thing is, I slept really, really well. Um, just deep sleep. Hardly woke up finally a deep sleep and it is possible to get a good sleep here on the chief so we're going to be in kansas city very soon uh, i can see the sun coming up now it's still quiet everybody's still sleeping here but one more breakfast one more lunch we just left lawrence kansas and we were an hour late there but according to amtrak's website we're scheduled to be only 19 minutes late when we get to kansas city and then on time after that so we'll see Anyway, good morning, what's for breakfast? All right, I'm the only one here in the lounge car. Uh, it's 6.30. I just got some big intelligence from Jimmy in the cafe downstairs. There's a football game, Chicago versus Kansas City. So no wonder there's gonna be so many people. So it's not normally like this. Normally, I guess the Southwest Chief, maybe a lot of people get out of Kansas City, but not like a whole train load. So that's the day I chose to do this. Anyway, here's my breakfast. Got a blueberry muffin, which I'm told to eat with a spoon. An excellent big coffee and my applesauce, which I'm still getting through. The thing is, I'm trying to avoid yesterday's Atlanta Falcons score because I want to watch it tonight. And I don't want to hear, I don't want to know what the score was because it would ruin the game for me. Hoping to watch it at my hotel room tonight in Chicago. Yesterday, some people behind me started talking about the NFL and one of them had seen the score so they were talking about all these teams I was like oh no please and I was trying not to listen but of course I was listening the good thing is that nobody ever talks about the Falcons so of course I was safe but now we're gonna get a whole train load full of NFL fans chattering about football that's what I imagine now so the, 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 the competition is on can I avoid the score ladies and gentlemen have your attention please in just a few minutes, we will arrive at the downtown Kansas City Station. So once we arrive in Kansas City, you're more than welcome to step off the train, get some fresh air, or use this time to smoke. Please keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that this train will leave on time at exactly 7.28. Once again, this train will depart from Kansas City at exactly 7.28 a.m. Also, folks, for my passengers sitting in the coach cars, this, every seat on this train is going to be taken after we leave Kansas City. So that means if you're traveling by yourself, please make the seat next to you available. Once again, we are taking on a lot of passengers at this next, next station stop. Kansas City Station, next stop. If you do not allow passengers access to the seats that they were assigned, you will be removed. Once again, please do not make us remove you from the train. This train will be at capacity. If you do not allow passengers their seating assignment, you will be removed. Once again, in the train will depart from Kansas City at 7 a.m.
Well, a lot of people got on, but I just walked through the train and like, there's a bunch of empty seats still, so I don't quite know what the situation is, but I came here to the lounge car, got another cup of coffee, as if I'm not wired enough already, and enjoying the early morning mist on these fields outside. Very, very nice here. And there's actually space in the lounge car. I thought my lounge car days were over for this trip, but here we are. A lot of people with Kansas City uh, Chiefs. Uh, see? <laughs> Uh, uniforms on or shirts, jerseys. So, a festive atmosphere, but my car is actually pretty quiet. We have one more stop in Missouri. We go all the way across Missouri, but there's only two stops. Um, Kansas City and La Plata. And then there's one stop in Iowa, and then the rest are all in Illinois. We are in these vast agricultural fields of central, north central Missouri, and this is one of my favorite things to see on a train. There's something kind of special about the agricultural fields. These big fields, there's just a few birds flying around. Sometimes those big, long, like, sprayer machines and stuff. There's mist on the distant trees because it's still early. And everything's super bright and sunny. Yeah. By the way, somebody did get the seat next to me. Uh, they sat here for a little bit and then they took off to the cafe car thing. So it's been pretty much the same. Every now and then they'll come back for a little bit, but pretty much got the place to myself still. In fact, most people are sleeping or in the cafe car. And it's so quiet. Like, I thought everybody was going to be chatty, but <laughs> forgot that it was 7.30 in the morning and nobody's interested in chatting. So it actually got quieter when all the NFL people got on the train. Anyway, we're about to hit Iowa. This train goes just a little bit into the far southeastern corner of Iowa. Stops at one station called Fort Madison. And right after that, we cross the Mississippi River. It's a long bridge across the Mississippi River. That's, I think, probably the main thing today. Okay, this is Fort Madison, Iowa, the only stop in Iowa. In just a few minutes, we're gonna be crossing over the Great Bridge across this very wide part of the Mississippi River, and then we'll be in Illinois, the final state of this trip. Once in Illinois, Amtrak's train tracker said we were going to be a mere seven minutes late to Chicago. And it was time for my lunch, my final Southwest Chief meal. Okay, I just had my final meal in the cafe. It was the ham and Swiss cheese sandwich on a pretzel roll. It was very good. I'd like to point out that I've had uh, different food, except for drinks, had all different food each time I went to the cafe, so I kind of got a good sampling of the cafe. And I had no problem with the cafe. It was just microwave, heated up microwave type food, but it was actually quite good. So don't let people tell you that the cafe is terrible on Amtrak. I think it's pretty good. Ask that if you're sitting upstairs on the site balance car, that you please return to your assigned coach accommodations or sleeping car accommodations. 
Once again, this will give me time to clean up the car prior to arrival into Chicago. As you near Chicago, the last few stops are closer together. There's a sense of excitement on board. For me, anticipation of arrival after such a long journey, but also sadness that the adventure was coming to an end. And at this time, folks, I do want to thank all of you very much for bringing joy to my award day. And also thank you for your patronage down here in the cafe. On behalf of the staff and myself, we also want to thank you for choosing and practice your mode of transportation and hope to see you in the near future. So to everybody on board, I wish you a beautiful, wonderful, amazing afternoon. Thank you very much. Good attention, ladies and gentlemen. We are on our final approach to our last and final station stop of Chicago Union Station. All right, we're here, Chicago. Uh, we're 20 minutes late arriving, so it's 3.10 p.m. right now. That's very good for a 45-hour train. Now, it's kind of an ordeal being on that train for two days, two nights in coach. Um, a good, in a good way, a good ordeal, but still, you need stamina to do it. And um, I've given myself a little reward for being on that train. I was on it for 45 hours. It felt like about five days, really. Um, but I've given myself a reward, something, something to, to offset all of that, and it's right up here. Look at this. This is my room at the Buckingham Hotel on the 40th floor, a few blocks away from Union Station in Chicago. But the thing is, look at the view outside. Lake Michigan on a sunny day. So I'm going to sit here and relax and look at this all evening and get over the discomfort of sleeping in the coach seat, but with many fond memories of that great Southwest chief. So thanks for coming with me and I'll see you on the next trip.